is up guys, it is Joe here from Joe Talks Wrestling and today we are doing another WWE fantasy booking video. This one with a very hot topic, the return of CM Punk, if it was to ever happen. Now ladies and gents, I have booked this in a style, a lot of you fail to see this, I book these fantasy bookings in a realistic style to how I believe WWE themselves would book it, so I'm sort of predicting how they would book it, but booking it myself, if that makes sense. Anyway, enough of the rambling, let's get right into it. Okay, so starting things off on January 26th at the 2020 Royal Rumble pay-per-view. It is the men's Royal Rumble match. The countdown clock has started for the final entrant, number 30, CM Punk's music hits. Now, Punk lasts in this match until the final four. The other four participants don't matter. They're not relevant to the story. But just know that Punk is in the final four. The crowd are going absolutely crazy. He looks like he's about to eliminate someone else when who other, and here's the controversial part, than a suited Triple H runs in the ring and eliminates CM Punk the same way that Kane did in 2014. It's repeating itself all over again. Triple H doesn't attack Punk, however. He just eliminates him and then retreats. So we're moving on to the next week on Raw. So Triple H comes out and he's trying, obviously, he's getting booed majorly. Uh, I said next week, I meant next night, sorry. So Triple H is getting seriously booed by the fans. You screwed Punk. Like, you know, everyone, everyone's booing Hunter and he's standing there and he's looking around and thinking, you know what? No, I don't need to hear this. And Triple H cuts a big promo, talking a lot of truth, saying how all these years you guys have pushed for me as Triple H to help out younger talent, to bring up younger talent, guys from NXT, make them superstars. But this guy comes back after six years and all of a sudden everyone else's hard work doesn't matter. You want him in the main event and none of the guys that I have built for you and I am not having it. So Triple H is cutting a very passionate promo, obviously. Talking a lot of truth, this, where's this guy been for six years? Why does he all of a sudden get to come back and earn a main event at WrestleMania? That's not how stuff works. So yeah, that happens. And then Cult of Personality hits and CM Punk charges down to the ring and we get a massive brawl between the two. Superstars, security, obviously breaking it up and Raw goes off the air with these two in a bloodied mess. So the next week on Raw, CM Punk comes out and he grabs a microphone. He stands there, he looks around, the crowd are going crazy with CM Punk chants. He's standing in the ring and he slowly looks to the hard cam and says, it has been six years since I have held a live microphone on live TV. I have a lot of shit to say. And obviously, note the use of profanity here. Uh, Punk has basically got a whole 20-minute segment just to talk. Uh, I'm, I can't obviously say what Punk's going to say because it will be entirely unscripted, but Punk will just talk, do what he's fantastic at, pipe bomb. Uh, and then eventually the promo ends with him calling Triple H a fucking corporate cowardly suck-up until his mic is cut off. He's standing there, he's hitting his mic, nothing. The mic is cut, raw fades, uh, in the next transition, obviously, when we come back on the air, Punk's out of sight, it all changes. So, then we move on to social media. Middle of the week, on like Wednesday, let's say. When WWE.com posts an article saying CM Punk has been suspended for use of inappropriate language on live TV. It doesn't say how long for, but it does say Punk is suspended. He's not coming back anytime soon. So, we do that. We don't do what WWE normally do in storyline and fire someone and bring them back the next week. We are not going to do that. Punk is off the show for three to four weeks. Three to four weeks. There we go. Got it that time. So, we move on. Punk wants to target Triple H. NXT. NXT is Triple H's baby. We all know that. So, we scheduled a main event match on NXT. I don't know what it is. I didn't think into it. But saying it's just like Johnny Gargano versus, you know, Adam Cole or something like that. But before it can happen, the commentators are getting ready for this match. You know, they're like, oh, yeah, up next is this. Similar to Seth at TakeOver in 2017, 
Punk comes out with his hood, takes his mic down, calls out Triple H once again, takes his hood down, sorry, calls out Triple H once again, saying, look, I'm here, fight me. And uh, that's when Triple H comes out, same as what he did with Seth, stands on stage, smirks, and calls out some security, calls out some mid-card wrestlers, Punk takes on every single one of them, he's frying roundhouse kicks, he's frying punches, takes them all out until finally Undisputed Era's music hits. So UE come out, Adam Cole, Triple H is uh, whispering something to Adam Cole. Adam's obviously acknowledging what he has to say. They run to the ring, they charge CM Punk and Undisputed Era beats CM Punk down to a pulp. And NXT goes off the air. So we are now literally one week away from WrestleMania. One week. One week Punk has. And then Raw is on. There's nothing going on. It's on about the next segment, similar to what happened with just NXT just now. But you see on the hard cam, obviously you see one side of the crowd on the hard cam the whole time. Some scuffling's going on. There's there's fists being flown. Everyone's sort of watching it. And uh, they're acting like it's a shoot. WWE is sort of like, you know, trying to keep their cameras off of it. And uh, security guards are getting involved. These security guards are getting punched left, right and centre until this guy jumps the barricade. It's CM Punk once again. He gets in the ring. He's fighting off these security guards. More security are coming out. More security are coming out. But all of a sudden, running down from the ramp to help out guys like Kofi Kingston, Kevin Owens, Cassius Ono and Daniel Brian, all friends of CM Punk, all guys that believe that they have been screwed by the system. I'm just throwing Cassius Ono in there because he hasn't really done a lot and I know he gets along with Punk. But yeah, these guys are all helping out. They're all in the ring. They're all brawling. All of these, Daniel Bryan and Kofi especially, have had the odds stacked up against them going into WrestleMania. We are literally getting a yes movement taking over Raw again. But it's with all the wrestlers taking on security guards. So that happens, more security are coming out, they're just getting dealt with by the guys in the ring until Punk finally grabs a mic and says, these guys are with me because of this reason, you've been screwed as well, and I am not leaving this ring until you, Triple H, give me a no-holds-barred match at Wrestle. Mania. Obviously, Triple H standing at the top of the ring, uh, top of the ring, top of the ramp, getting really agitated. He says, you want it, you got it. So the match is official at WrestleMania. It's going to be Triple H versus CM Punk. A no holds barred match. Oh my God. So it's finally happening. Triple H, CM Punk, WrestleMania. These two beat the hell out of each other. It's an instant classic the moment the bell rings. We have sledgehammer shots, chair shots, just, you know, elbow drop through the announce table, doing all of the normal spots they do and more until finally Punk lifts up Triple H, hits him with the go to sleep. And before he gets a chance to do the pinfall, I know you guys might be thinking this is repetitive, but another hooded figure jumps in the ring and attacks CM Punk. It's not a group. It's not a faction. It's not a tag team. It's one guy. Still with his hood and mask on, this guy kicks Punk in the gut, bounces off the rope, and curb stomps his head onto a steel chair. That man takes his hood down, and Seth freaking Rollins is standing in the middle of the ring, with a fallen CM Punk and his mentor Triple H laying there looking at him as if to say, what the hell are you doing here? Without thinking, Seth grabs Triple H, tries to get him up to his feet. Triple H is visibly like, you know, what what is going on? Seth dumps Triple H on top of Punk. One, two, three. The crowd goes crazy. Everyone is booing. It's an absolute train wreck. But the reason I've done it this way is everyone that's ever gone against the authority on the biggest stage has won. Kofi Kingston versus Daniel Bryan. The odds were stacked against him by Vince. Kofi won. WrestleMania 35 in general. All of the baby faces won. We need a big win from a big hill. Daniel Bryan beat the authority. Everyone beats the authority, everyone beats the figure in charge, but not CM Punk, not the guy that everyone wants the most. CM Punk crumbles and can't beat Triple H. This way, the attention go on to Seth Rollins is even worse. He's getting heat 
Everyone is booing Seth. He can become now the top hill again like he was in 2015. And the love for CM Punk keeps on growing and growing. Triple H can not be involved in the program now. He doesn't need to be involved in it. But WWE get their win because the guy that walked out on them comes back and gets beaten. In Vince's eyes, that's probably a win. Uh, obviously, the likelihood of CM Punk's like signing up to do this is very slim but this is all fantasy and this is how i would do it i would have the big hill lose because then people are immediately gonna think well what happens next i loved wrestlemania 35 i loved that all the baby faces won but after the show i wasn't left thinking well where do they go from here I was left with joy and thinking, yeah, all the baby faces won. When a big hill wins, in a way, it makes you want to watch more because you think, oh my God, how on earth are they going to work around this? But yeah, that was my fantasy book. And would you guys like to see this continue? Would you like to see me book the CM Punk Seth Rollins feud? Uh, if you would, tell me in the comment section down below. This is Remember my opinion, but also how I think WWE would book it if they had the story in their hands. And I think 100% if Punk returns, we're getting a Punk Triple H feud. I just think that that's how it's going to go, whether we like it or not. But once again, I've been Joe from Joe Talks Wrestling. Please be sure to give this video a like, comment and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.